So, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> and um, a very welcome to a brand new format of the Leggy webinar. Namely, we are now welcoming uh, users of Leggy to learn more about them and how they use Leggy. So, um, today I'm, I'm really excited to welcome Tobias. Um, Thank you very much. CEO and co-founder of YAMO. Um, and so, first of all, uh, the way we'll structure the, this webinar is, first of all, we, we will learn about YAMO and, and their product. And then in the second part, we will, uh, I will interview Tobias about how he's using Leggy. And at the end, as usual, we uh, will answer any questions. So feel free to already type them in, uh, in the chat. Great. So um, first of all, Tobias, can you tell us a few words about um, yourself? And also, of course, Yamo. Of course, thank you very much. Uh, at first, thank you for, for making this possible. Thank you, uh, that you for having me, uh, Yoko. Um, so um, I'm Tobias. I'm one of the three founders of Yamo. I have a business background. I used to work in retail. I used to work for uh, consumer goods companies. And uh, my two co-founders, one of them, Jose, has a food scientist background. And uh, Luca has a marketing background. He used to work for agencies, but also in the consumer goods uh, environment. And we all three did not understand why baby food was still made the way it is, or mostly is. And back then in 2017, when we actually started with Yamo, uh, there was just, let's say, common baby food. So all those glasses you might know from, from the store. Uh, and we did not understand why are those products shelf stable for three to five years, and why do they taste like they taste, and why are they all brown? And um, that's when we said we want to change this because this industry has not changed in the last six years. And we thought there is a very big need for change because we interviewed many, many young parents and they told us, look, uh, I would not buy what there is on shelf because I want something fresh. I want something tasty. And luckily, um, due to the fact that uh, Jose is a food scientist, he knew that there is a technology that would allow us to do something different and better. Uh, we just had to be the first and pioneer this new category. So in the end, um, Yamo is, uh, as opposed to all the common baby foods, fresh. So we have a product that is as fresh as homemade, but sh still uh, shelf stable for up to three months. So we have a product that is always uh, very tasty, full of vitamins and very nutritious, um, but we still can keep it fresh like a yogurt in a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the first to be um, launching this product in Europe mm -hmm. and uh, very successfully now we are live in three markets, Germany, Switzerland and Austria. Uh, we sell mainly online in a direct consumer subscription model, but also now starting to sell through retail. We just signed a major partnership with, uh, with Coop, where we will be throughout Switzerland in dedicated fridges with all of our products. So something that uh, is, I could have not wished for two years ago. <laughs> Great, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really impressive. And uh, actually too bad we don't have a prototype here to show, but- I will get one later. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I've, I've also personally tasted this uh, Yamo uh, food quetches, I yeah, think, the, exactly. the newest product. So, uh, tastes really good. Um, and yeah, so maybe last, last question about, uh, about Yamo itself. What about your current team size? Um, we're here actually in, in your office in Souk. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how, how about the team? Currently? So yeah, we started of course with just us three. Uh, then we were five, then we were 10, then we were 15, and now we're currently uh, roughly 25 people. All here based in Zouk. We have an additional um, uh, three people, in, two people in Belgrade and one person in Hungary uh, for software development. We also have people here in Zouk, but um, yeah, we are a bit remote there as well. And uh, yeah, that's our size currently. Great. Um, so now I'd like to go to the, to the second part. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really happy actually that we kick off this, uh, this new format with you because you were one of the very first Leggy users yeah. since uh, <laughs> 2018. Um, and so the, the first question I guess um, I would have is, um, why did you look for something else than an Excel sheet? Yeah, uh, why was I looking for something else than an Excel sheet? I mean, the Excel sheet worked, um, but it was always uh, a real hustle because sometimes 
somebody messed up the formula or sometimes you send it out by mail, the person that worked with it uh, wrote something different in it, he, he sent it back to you and it was just a mess. And um, there were so many, let's say, things on the way that I just always realized I have certain things that just need to work all the time and I need to be 100% able to rely on this. And this was one thing, because if an investor asks you for, can you send me your cap table and uh, what would the valuation be, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh yes, I have this Excel, but I'm not quite sure if it still works. You don't want to be in that place. Yeah. I was there <laughs> sometimes. So I was really looking for something like, how can I manage this situation better? And uh, unfortunately, you guys came around. Great, yeah. And so I, I believe um, the, the first time you learned about Leji was through one of our common investors. Correct, yeah. And um, could you maybe describe what was your wow moment when that, that triggered the decision for you to, you know, use Leji? I mean, at start, I always, I just try things and I want to see how it works. I'm very, let's say, intuitive person. I like when things are working smoothly. And with Leji, from the beginning on, I had the feeling like, oh, I understand more or less how this works. It is not something I have to spend hours to understand it. So I just put in things here and then it shows me graphs and I'm a simple person. I like this. <laughs> so that was kind of for me the moment. Uh, I like simplicity. I like convenience. And if it's something that I understand within five to 10 minutes, then I think it's a very, very good product. Great. So, yeah. Okay. And so could you now, um, I would say we, we would switch to, to screen chain because I would yeah. love to, um, that you actually show us uh, one of your favorite um, features that or how you actually use um, right. Leggy at Yamo. So now I am sharing the screen. Um, so yeah. So um, I yours. have to quickly move this a bit here, uh -huh. uh, over here, good. So um, one of the main features that I uh, often use is the, um, the cap table simulation. Because that's something that you, when you are a startup and you are fundraising, you always need to do because there are sometimes different scenarios. Um, you have different opportunities with different investors, but uh, every, every scenario is a bit different and you need to model that to understand what does it mean for me, what does it mean for, for the company, what does it mean for the investor. So um, I really like this feature, the, um, the cap table simulation. And basically how it works is, um, you have there the overview of, for example, what is the current valuation, what was invested, and now you can go to the scenarios over here, and you then have different scenarios. So now we already prepared a bit something uh, beforehand. So here, for example, we prepared a best case scenario, we called it. What you now have here, you have this best case scenario, you can change the name here. And then here in the tabs, so to say, you have the different rounds. So the rounds, they afterwards stack up, right? Yeah. So what we prepared here, we have, for example, a Series A. Now let's say, for example, this Series A would happen at a valuation pre-money. And you can always um, change this here, pre to post, makes sense, I guess, pre-money valuation of 10 million. Let's say uh, the share class that is handed out is preferred A. Uh, the date, uh, we don't pick something in the past. Let's say uh, it, this, oh, this round will happen in 20, 2022, uh, 2020, 9th of September. And now what is really cool is that you actually here have all the investors. Now in this case, there was already a convertible. I will quickly throw that out here. Um, now we would say, okay, we have uh, Elon Musk, he wants to invest. And we will have, let's say, Peter Tool. He would also like to invest. So those two guys um, will invest. They will not invest that much money. So they invest. Uh, Alan Must will invest one million, and Peter Tool invests two million. Now, immediately, what is calculated here is the percentage that they will receive. Um, you also have the ESOP here. You have the issue price here. The number of shares here. And the cool thing is really that you down here already see kind of now how is the um, the, the shares, how are they split, who, yeah. who, belong, uh, who owns what of the company. Mm -hmm. Now we also see here the percentages, you see um, the fully diluted, now it's already including some convertible loans here, I suppose, in this scenario. 
and how much they have invested. That's a really cool feature. Now, let's say I would go to, I would really build a new scenario from the ground up. Um, I would call this, for example, the first round series A. Um, thank you. <laughs> uh, I would say this is a 20 million valuation where we start. They will receive preferred A shares. Uh, now it's let's leave the date in mm -hmm. the past. And you add an investor. So I tell, I say, that, okay, we add an investment here. This is now from Elon Musk, and he invests 5 million francs here. So you would immediately see after the investment round, Elon Musk owns 29.76% of the company, and um, that's the amount of shares he has. Now, the cool thing is, um, I would add a Series B, for example, here, Series B. At, let's say, the valuation would be 50 million, I just put in something, and uh, they would receive also preferred A shares. This would then happen very quickly after the Series A, <laughs> yeah. very realistic scenario. Uh, and add, add another investor, um, this time it is Jack Palm, uh, that invests 10 million. And now what you can see, Okay, Elon Musk now owns 24% of the company, Jack Parr owns 18.5, and so on. This after Series A and after Series B. So it's really cool, you can go back here uh, to Series A again, check out how, how much was it back then, how much will it be at the Series B. And uh, then you have all those scenarios. So then let's call this now the, the new best case, best case two or something. And uh, I would now create different scenarios, and say a middle case, worst case, whatsoever, and would start comparing what is it that uh, I want to go with and, uh, and how do I want to go forward. So yeah, that's one of the features that we often, really often use. Yeah, thanks a lot for, for showing it. Uh, I, I think you're really like a power user. You, you kind of switch really fast on <laughs> scenarios, so it's really great to see that. Um, so actually talking about um, financing rounds, um, I was wondering if you would have any kind of tips for our audience about um, the processes around the yeah. financing round in your own experience. Um, maybe you can share you know, one, one learning um, that you would do differently. Yeah, I think one sure. main learning is uh, it always takes longer than you think it will. And so that's why my, one of my advices would be start early on. I mean, uh, we had uh, times where, for example, there was, uh, we were raising a round and we were in talks with many investors and we asked them, so what would your timeline look like? Mm -hmm. And they always said, yeah, well, we were very fast. Two months, three months. In the end, it's always four months. It's always maybe even five months. And that's something you just really have to take into account uh, because then when you start too late, uh, you may be running to uh, run into a cash squeeze, and then it gets difficult. Yeah. So I think that's one of my main learnings. Also, something that uh, I, I had to learn a bit, also the hard way sometimes, and uh, it's an advice I would give. Yeah. So, how many months in advance would you say? I would say five, four to five months is really four is rather the lower end. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I know it, it hurts because you're never at the point where you want to be to, to show your case to investors. So yeah. you always think, but one more month is one more month of growth. One yeah. more month is one more month of milestones hit. But in the end, uh, I mean, all of us, we are startups. None of us has money for, for, for three years. <laughs> sure. That's really true. So thanks for, for this advice. Um, the other topic that uh, is also covered in Ledger is, of course, the employee participation plan. Yeah. And there I'd like to ask you, when and why did you decide at YAMO to introduce a participation plan? Yeah, that is something that we decided very early on. Um, we founded the company in August 2016. Uh, we then started uh, developing the product but the, and, and went live one and a half years later, November 2017. And the very first thing that we did after, um, after actually founding the company is that we went hiking. So all they look at me, we asked three founders who we went hiking and what we did is we took a piece of paper and we said, what is it that our culture will be like? What is it that we want? What are no goals within Yarmo and so on? And we kind of wrote down very ground rules. And one of the things was we want that people are entrepreneurs as well. 
or that they allow employees are entrepreneurs as well. That's why we said we want to have an employee stock option program. Of course, we did not know the name of this thing back then. We just knew we want that people are shareholders. Yeah. Uh, because I strongly believe that when you are a shareholder and you are you're a part of it, you have, you are an owner of this company, you behave differently, and it is really something from you. You're more than just an employee. It's never just an employee, but you're more than it, and therefore. We want to do that um, and uh, I'm very happy for that we went for this because it's still something that I see is very, is not that common yeah. in Switzerland and in Germany. I mean, Germany, from a legal point of view, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to incentivize uh, employees. Um, in Switzerland, I don't see it super often yeah. with many startups. I personally think it is very, very important. Yeah. And uh, when you look, for example, uh, to the US, um, there is absolutely normal. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and actually, um, I think the, in terms of numbers, um, uh, employees in Europe own about, about half of what employees in the US own of their companies. Wow. Okay. So there is a there is a huge gap. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a it's a very important topic for startups. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, and so, talking about you know um, financing round and ASAPs, um, what would you say um, Leggy uh, has the, the most impact on your your company on Yamo? What what kind of process? Yeah, uh, with, with as I said at the beginning, with Leggy, it's a thing that I just have certainty. I have certainty that things are right because I need to be reliable that when I put in. 125.7 as a share price, that everything is calculated right, and that all the that all the ratios are calculated right, and so on. Because when you're in due diligence and you need to deliver all those things, you don't mm -hmm. want to be there like, oh my god, in my Excel, and I'm not quite sure if I got this right, and that's not that's a killer. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, for me, it is it is, it is a feeling of. Um, safety and the feeling of uh yeah in, in lecce it will be calculated correctly yeah <laughs> yeah it, in the end of course the, the the factor that can mess it up is the input factor that's me mm -hmm. when i input it into lecce so i still have to be very cautious uh but I, I, as soon as it is in there i know it works and actually talking about that do you um, use it only on your own or do you also did you also invite your co-founder yeah. or a lawyer to have so access? um i i'm the main user within yamo but uh, both of my co-founders of course also have access to it uh, most uh, no, not most i would say at least half of our investors also use it so they go into Legend to to check their share uh, their share holdings and um so far that's how we use it with lawyers, not yet. I think that would be would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Is there a functionality like this? So yeah, you can actually invite um, your lawyer and give and uh, give them a view only access or uh -huh. admin access, so that you know they can um, check if everything's correct or uh, in terms of due diligence for for new lawyers. Oh, that's great! Uh, I did not even know that. So yeah. that's, uh, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because often lawyers tell you, look. We are good at lawyer stuff, but we're not so good at calculating. Yeah. So you have to come up with the calculations. And if I'm then there, and I mean, I'm not super bad at math. I'm quite okay, I would say. But still, I mean, when you have these, like, those Excels and with a lot of things changing around, it's always going to be there is a little mistake or a rounding mistake or whatever. Yeah. It will always happen. <laughs> sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we are running a bit out of time. So I would say... Um, are there any urgent questions from the audience? So if you have any questions, um, please ask it now in the chat. All right, I think there is no more question. I think we were very clear about everything to be honest. So um, if that's the case, then I would say, would you have um, any, you know, any last thing you would like to share with, with our audience? Um, well, I mean, it uh, would be great if people would check out Lecce, I suppose, because that's what, I guess, why they're looking at, looking at this video. So um, just try it out. Uh, I think while trying out, you will find out how it works. And uh, I also brought something, a little, a little gift for, for all your viewers. Uh -huh. um, uh, when you go to yamo.bio, 
So that's our URL.bio. Yeah. Bio. Uh, you can enter the code YAMOFRIEND20 and you will have 20% uh, discount on your first order. That is awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. So, uh, <laughs> can you maybe repeat the code? Yeah, YAMOFRIEND20. Okay. Um, everything small. One word, everything small, YAMOFRIEND20 uh, on YAMO.bio. Great. Well, thank you so much, Tobias, for, for being much. on the webinar. And uh, as usual, we will upload a, a um, recording on our YouTube channel. So uh, check it out. And um, thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.